Date point. First year. Third month. BV. Independent Dray Station 104. Auspice or Prosperity? Ialva. I know I've asked this before, she began, her tone neutral as possible. But repetition of questions with obvious answers is your favourite pastime, so go ahead and ask it. There I was again. His words weren't any different, but it was the tone. Ever since the whole medical station incident, there'd been something off with him. As she'd been lazy, she would have said he always had an air of disappointment, but that wasn't it. He was disappointed, that much was obvious. But it wasn't that simple. She couldn't explain it. The uncharacteristic mood, whatever it was, set her teeth on edge. The fact that they'd been stuck waiting at this train station for what seemed an eternity wasn't helping. Especially since he was gone most of the time, leaving her with absolutely nothing to do, or anyone to talk to. She knew she partially deserved it, maybe a little bit more than just partially, but couldn't you see she was sorry? Most maddening of all was that she knew that he did see, but also understood why that didn't change anything. Self-awareness, even the meagre modicum to which she was willing to lay claim, was a terrible bunkmate. Whatever was affecting him, she was determined not to make it any worse, hence why she was very careful to keep her words as far from confrontational as possible. Are you sure they'll come this way? We've been here for three weeks, he grunted in answer. And there's been no sign of them. You said yourself it's been a while, maybe they changed their route. As always when she breached this particular subject, he shook his head. You'd have to know them to understand why I know they haven't changed this part. A few routes I could see them avoiding, but this stop was always one of their most lucrative. If they're still flying cargo, they'll stop by here eventually. It shouldn't be much longer. You've said that before, and yet here we are, having it take much longer. Alright, maybe her words weren't exactly non-confrontational, but at least her tone wasn't too bad. For all the difference it made in his mood, she might as well have screamed at him. Instead of replying with even a consoling sentence or mocking jibe, he just grunted, not bothering to look up as he settled his disguise around himself. She hadn't had much of a chance to see many of the beings out here, but even from her limited knowledge, she was pretty sure his disguise wasn't meant to make him look like any species in particular. Rather, it seemed to only make it difficult to classify him as anything at all. As far as disguises went, he could have done worse. Unfortunately, the readying of said disguise meant he was going out for the day, Time to play a dozen chess games with herself. See you later tonight, he murmured on his way out. She grunted in acknowledgement. I felt bad leaving you Arva sitting there. Her days had to be as boring as mine were frustrating. Still, it wasn't like I could let her roam the station. The last thing I needed was all the courty on board to have their heads caved in, and all traffic at this station cease for the foreseeable future. The disguise was for a similar reason. If word got out a human was waiting around here for someone, and that word would reach my quarry, I had a feeling they'd permanently skip this stop. And if they weren't coming here, then I saw nothing else for it but to go crawling back to Vakno. She'd give me an answer, sure, but at the price of a few more favours. I was almost rid of her, and happy to keep it that way. And so I sat, watching as ship after ship came and went. An endless queue of disappointment. If nothing else, it gave me time to puzzle over Yalva. She'd been different ever since the station. Granted, that wasn't much of a mystery, but whenever we talked, she spoke in a way that made me feel like a ticking bomb, and her just waiting for the moment to bolt. But how does she think she was still angry? Why would she think that? I told her very clearly I wasn't. But have you been acting like it? Of course I have. You and I are watching the same life unfold, right? And yet you know you've not been acting the same towards her. Well, yeah, sure, but... I mean, I guess. I don't need to hear this. She does. Hear what? Something I can't fully articulate myself? Look up. Look up? What kind of critic bullshit is that? If anything, I'd expect you to say something like, Look inside- Look up, you moron! They're here! Oh, shit. My body, automatically taking me through the steps of physically checking every arrival, had brought me to a large docking bay, standing before an achingly familiar ship. A cargo ship, though possessed of a few too many weapons to make it appear completely harmless. The third cargo hold of the ship looked like someone had put a shuttle through it, though the wound looked old. A blue-striped four-legged figure, having just disembarked, walked briskly in front of me without a second glance. Sever- Oh, no, hang on. That wasn't him, unless he'd somehow gotten younger over the years. 
Holy fuck, was that Dink? Last I've seen of him, he's still been a kid and so lifeless a corpse would have seemed rambunctious next to him. Quickly catching up to him, he turned before I had fully reached him, looking at me questioningly. I couldn't think of anything to say. Nothing seemed right. I endlessly thought about the right words when this moment finally came, and now every speech I'd rehearsed sounded tactless and tawdry. So I just stood there, silent. Dink's face slowly darkened as we stared at each other, a complex web of emotions contorting his expression. When he spoke, his voice was thick. You can't hide what you are under any disguise, not from someone who knows your kind. He gulped. I wondered if I'd see you again, if you'd ever finish what you started. I assume that's why you're back? It's dead? I wasn't strong enough to tell the truth. I nodded. Well, Ding's voice filled with sudden heat, at the same time his face flushed with a smouldering hate. There's that. As quickly as it had come, the anger drained, leaving him pale. The twisting mesh of expressions also ceased, leaving him with a lifeless mask. It was almost frightening when the deathly visage spoke. I thought a lot about what I'd do if I ever saw you again. He reached into a satchel, slung across his back. About what you did? He withdrew his hand, holding a small disc with an indicator strip around the edge. He contemplated the nerve jam, holding it close, so it was only visible to the two of us. About what you deserved. A ghost of the anger wormed its way across his features. And every time I imagined this, it ended with you dead. One way or the other, I'd find a way to kill you, even if it killed me too. Because for all your words, your revenge wasn't for us. It was for you. If you'd actually cared about us, you wouldn't have run off. You would have stayed and helped fix everything you'd broken. But what I've learned about humans, from you and the others that have made the news, is that you just break things, don't you? I stood, frozen, waiting for him to act. He tensed, holding his breath. I could tell he was going to do it. I had to make sure he didn't catch any of the numerous bystanders around us. But then he exhaled, deflating, as his arms dropped limply at his sides, the disc hidden in his palm. But now you're here, and I just want you gone, he rasped. I'm tired of killing, tired of caring. Leave. Just leave. I wanted nothing more, but Dink wasn't the only one I needed to talk to. I will, I promise quietly. But I have to see your father first, and he's dead. Dink interrupted. My breath caught, and he continued. She was always strong enough for both of them. When she died, so did he. His body just took a while to catch up. I didn't want to ask, but I managed to round the lump in my throat. Manthiel? On the ship, he said, deadpan. I nodded my thanks. Then, because it seemed the only way appropriate... I placed the tablet with the ownership license and master to the acquired cargo ship on the ground between us. Turning, I walked into the ship, heading towards engineering. I was right, and as I entered the engine room I immediately spotted him, hunched over an open panel in the wall. There were others in the room, but I hardly noticed them. The reverse was not true, however, and Matthew knew something was different when the rest of the room's occupants started edging towards the door. Guess I'd been with these people long enough they knew my walk when they saw it. My layers didn't work on Manny either. The moment he saw me, something tightened about his eyes. Between himself and Dink, Manthiel seemed to have aged the most. Light splotches masked skin that had once been a uniform orange, and the hunch I had assumed to be an affection for his work was now shown to be a permanent feature. Determined to not let this encounter unfold like the last, I opened my mouth to begin, only to be stopped by the signal for HALT in our old hand signal language. You talk to the captain? Yes. He grunted his approval. Then leave, he said, without anger. I made my peace with you long ago. He truly sounded as though he had. Apparently he wasn't completely peaceful because I was halfway out of engineering when he spoke again. Your name? I came to an abrupt stop. Uh, excuse me? You told me your name was Human. Why lie? I thought back to the time when a younger Manthiel had managed to ask my name through simple gestures, and then the reasons behind my answer. 
It was easy enough to tell the truth. I shrugged. Why not? He gave a coughing laugh before looking at me seriously once again. I hope, for all our sakes, you aren't like other humans. I thought a moment before answering. Me too. He waved me off, returning to his work. I didn't look back. There's one more person you need to talk to. I know. Ialva. The sounds of Selvin returning came from the airlock. She was only on her second game. You're back early, she called without looking up. Thought caught up with her words. Wait, does that mean... Selvin shuffled into the dining room, where she was and stopped. He was like a completely new person. Even with his recent change in attitude, he'd still had that half smile just with a hint of bitterness to it. All of that was gone now, and his face looked smaller, empty. Most frightening of all, he looked old. Lines she didn't remember were visible, across skin that looked almost thin, drawn out. She was suddenly faced with the reality that she didn't know his age, or how long his people usually lived. Everything okay? She asked cautiously. He made a sound like a laugh, but still didn't smile. Then he spoke, and it betrayed a bone-deep weariness she'd never thought he, of all people, could have. I need to talk to you, he pleaded. I've already messed up one apology today, maybe two, because I was too scared to speak. Well, I'm pretty sure the second one wasn't really needed because he seemed pretty chill with me. But who knows with him, he's like half robot at this point. But what's more important right now is, I get this out of me before he drives me insane. I've been kind of a dick to you lately, and I'm sorry. I mean, you've done so much for me, back on the planet, I mean. And I can't thank you enough for all you did back there. I probably wouldn't be alive if it weren't for you, and I definitely wouldn't have made it off the planet since I'd lost a lot of blood at the end there and all. And... He was speaking faster, fringes of frustration edging into his voice. The exhaustion receding back into the cracks. I'm saying I don't want you to think I've forgotten about all that, so I'm sorry if I've been a little prickly towards you lately, because... He talked long enough without her input. Prickly? Don't you feel that's underselling it a little? That frustration started to sound a little defensive. If I am, then it's deserved, but you're messing me up. I'm telling you that I don't want you to think I don't appreciate everything you've done for me, and... How can I not, when you've been all bent out of shape ever since we left the medical station? Yup, definitely defensiveness. Oh, like that's some great mystery or something. Almost as if something happened at the medical station that I might have disapproved of, perhaps. He scowled. Shit, this was supposed to be an apology. Look, no, you listen. She was getting louder, but she wanted to say this for a while. I told you I'm sorry about that. It won't happen again. What more do you want? Besides, it's not like you're some saint when it comes to self-control. Oh, like that excuses you. His volume rose to match hers. Just because I fucked up bigger than you doesn't mean you have a free pass to pillage and destroy. Fine. Much more. And she'd be shouting. But it does mean you can't act like you're some parent punishing an unruly child. I don't think I'm your parent. He really was shouting. I just think you should have... He faltered. Eyes darting wildly as he searched for the right words. Should have what? She screamed back. Should have killed him before he put up the barrier? That's what you would have done, right? No, that's not it. Should have... Fuck, I don't know. You just should have... Fucking say it already. Been like me. His answer shocked her. Back to quieter tones. What? Destroying the room. That's what I would have done. Proving I was more powerful. That's how I would have handled it. But you're supposed to be better than that. Better than that? Better than what? Better than me. His words opened a floodgate of thoughts as something clicked into place. That's why you brought me along, isn't it? She asked softly. You were scared of everything you'd done, but didn't know how to stop yourself. So when I said I was coming with you, you thought maybe I could help you, keep you under control. Relief flooded from his words as he breathed. Exactly. How then it must have been, she thought to see her dancing around that lab, demonstrating the exact same lack of control he was scared of, that he wanted her to keep him from exercising. She'd been sorry before, but now she felt ashamed. For a moment, she felt angry at the emotion. Why should she be ashamed, she felt to meet one of his expectations. She didn't owe him anything. She was here because he didn't deserve to just walk away free after what he'd done. And yet the feelings didn't go away, until she was forced to come to terms with their meaning. I think... She whispered into the silence. If you're willing to give me another chance, I can do that for you. He looked up, confused. 
until he saw her smile. Then he smiled back, and with that smile she made a promise to show him she could be stronger than he was.